Good morning, Forefront. Blessings. My name is Reg Cox, and I'm excited to be with you here again this morning. If you're new at Forefront, uh, I lead a community ministry called Lakewood Connects and support uh, the churches in Lakewood and build partnerships between faith, government, education, and business, and been a proud supporter and partner with Forefront for many years. Uh, Pastor Drew and I uh, prayed and talked about this uh, series on the Sermon on the Mount and uh, didn't know where this would end. And uh, we felt like, uh, and Drew felt like, this particular part of the Sermon on the Mount that we're going to lean into this morning about words, our words, was an, a special capstone to this series. And so we're going to be in Matthew 5, 33 through 37, and the title of the lesson is Watch Your Words. Watch Your Words. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but different parts of the country have different rules or different patterns or different ways of communication, uh, different ways of using their words. I'm, I grew up in Texas, and Texans, I would call, are very proactive communicators. Uh, if you walk, if you're standing in line at the grocery store, someone's just going to strike up a conversation with you. They might ask you about where you got that coat or what you think about the weather. They just, and um, we had to coach our Colorado kids, okay, when you go in the store, these people are not weird. This is just the normal way they communicate. They're just going to strike up a conversation with you. So Christian, our words translate God to the rest of the world. How we speak is the platform from which the rest of the world comes to know and understand God. So Christian, use your words carefully. Watch your words. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is reframing all of faith. He's saying, I know what you've thought faith was about. I know what the narrative about faith is, but let me tell you what faith is going to be about from now on. Six times in the Sermon on the Mount in chapter 5 of Matthew, Jesus says, you've heard it said, but I say. And he talks about murder, adultery, divorce, oaths, revenge, love. You've heard this, this is what you've been taught, but we're going to reframe faith. From now on, it's going to be like this. And the fourth of these reframing, redefining faith phrases of Jesus is about oaths or words. In Jesus' new faith reality, people of faith are to be especially sensitive to their words, to their promises. What we say in Jesus' new forward vision of what faith is going to be about is that our words have special weight. When you think about words, what, what's normal in our world today using your words? Well, what's normal is a very rash or harsh or aggressive form of communication, kind of like driving in Denver traffic, a little aggressive. How would Christ want us to use our words? What, how would he describe the way he would want our words to impact others? Well, they would be the Beatitudes. Mercy, pure, peacemaker. Watch your words, Christians. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that you would open up our hearts to your word this morning. Guide us as we think about how we communicate and what your vision is for communicating through Christians in this special, tense, and stressful time in our world. Bless us this morning, Father, we pray in the name of your Son. Amen. So when you walk through Scripture, the importance of words is extremely obvious. For instance, in Genesis chapter 1, at the beginning of all of Scripture, we read that in the beginning God made from nothing, the heavens and earth, the earth was empty, waste, and darkness, and the Spirit of God was moving over the top of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. All of creation occurs with the demonstration of the power of the Word. Now listen to me. God 
spoke and nothingness became a universe. God's plan, listen to this, God's plan is to share this creation power with us. God's plan is that the power of the word we see in Genesis 1 would be in us. He wants to share the creation power of word with us. Our words are to have great power to influence and change things. Watch your words, Christians. In Isaiah chapter 55, God speaking through the prophet says this in verse 11, my word which goes from my mouth will not return to me empty. It will do what I want it to do and it will carry out my plan well. God's word comes from his mouth into us, his people, and, and, and God says it's going to carry out his plan. So the Spirit of God assigns us gifts, authority, and mission. The Spirit of God assigns us gifts, authority, and a mission. Our gifts, our words, have the power to bless. Our, our words have the power to influence. Let me tell you something, Christian. You can't turn that off. You can't decide, you know, this is a especially frustrating day, and so I don't want my words to influence anybody. If you claim Jesus Christ, your words are filled with the Spirit, and the creative power of the Word of God to create all the universe is in you, and you can't turn that off. Our we are given gifts and we're given authority. God's will is carried out through us. God's spirit activates our words so that we carry out God's greater plan. He's given us a gift of the power of word and authority and he's given us a mission. We're sent with gifts and authority into our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our Facebook chats. Our mission is to make Jesus famous. Our mission is to make it easy for people to find and know Jesus. Our mission is not necessarily for everyone to know that we're right and they're wrong. That's not our mission. Our mission is to make Jesus beautiful. We're given gifts and authority and a mission. The Word of God and dwells in us when we claim Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so our number one mission is to make it easy for people to find Jesus. Jesus teaches about our gift, our authority, our mission in John chapter 15. It's just hours before the cross, and Jesus is speaking to the disciples and to us. And he says this in verse 7 of John 15. If you get your life from me, and my words live in you. Ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. Think about that promise for just a minute. If my words live in you, ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. Remember, God gives us gifts, the creative power of the word. He gives us authority so that we have unusual authority in our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our Facebook chats. We have this mission. Our focus is to make it easy for people to find and know Jesus. Jesus empowers our words so that others will be attracted to him. Think about walking into your life every day knowing that that power is in you. Jesus is empowering your words to attract people to him. What if you oriented your mind and your heart to your, use your words every day for that one mission, for that one focus? Lord, I'm going to go into my workplace today. I know, man, people are going to be amped up. I know there's going to be challenges. There's going to be things that I'm not ready for. Make it so that whatever I say today will draw people to your son, Jesus. Can you imagine if we oriented ourselves to that one focus and mission? In Hebrews chapter 4, the Hebrew writer talks about the power and the importance of the word. He writes in Hebrews 4 verse 12, God's word is living and powerful 
It is sharper than a sword that cuts both ways. It cuts straight into where the soul and the spirit meet, and it divides them. It cuts into the joints and bones. It tells what the heart is thinking about and what it wants to do. No one can hide from God. His eyes see everything we do. We must give an answer to God for what we have done. The author of the book of Hebrews reveals that the word of God has supernatural power to transform human hearts. So think about your mission, make Jesus famous, and the word of God coming through us has the power to transform the hearts of other human beings. It transforms their heart and their mind. It transforms and changes the world. God wants to activate that word power in us. God wants to activate that word power through us. Can you think of anything more important right now during this pandemic than every word coming from your life draws people to Jesus? I know that, I know that we can't all be in here in assembling this morning. I know there's a lot of things we can't do, but God's creative power is in us so that every word through us can transform the lives of other human beings. Christian, watch your words. I want to approach this passage. We're going to read this passage in Matthew 5, verse 33 through 37, but I want to approach it with this prayer. And so uh, wherever you are right now, we're just going to do an, an open eyes kind of prayer. So we'll post this prayer, and I want you to meditate on these prayer phrases as we pray them together. So, um, so here's the prayer. Lord, change me by your word. Remake my desires. Reshape my heart. Make me ready to represent your word in my world this week. Open my heart. I want to be changed. Amen. So here's the passage, the capstone of this Sermon on the Mount series for Forefront Church, Matthew 33. You have heard that it was said long ago, you must not make a promise you cannot keep. You must carry out your promises to the Lord. I tell you, do not use strong words when you make a promise. Do not promise by heaven, it's the place where God is. Don't promise by earth, it's where he rests his feet. Do not promise by Jerusalem, it's the city of the great king. Do not promise by your head, you are not able to make one hair white or black. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Anything more than this comes from the devil. So what's the message of this passage from Jesus? Um, I I don't think that the goal here is to ferret out every word and make it like an algebraic equation. I think it's supposed to be kind of simple. Watch your words, Christians. So let um, let me issue this to you for just a second. I want you to receive this. What Jesus is saying is your words are under your control. Your words are under your control. No outside influence has the power to make you use rash, harsh, or hurtful words. No outside influence has that right or that power you have to give. You have to give bad traffic unpaid bills you have to give a toxic co-worker you have to give those circumstances that right and that power to change your words because your words are under your power you have to choose to use harsh words during the cold war the united states developed several offensive weapons One of the most important offensive weapons in the arsenal of the United States of America was the B-1 bomber. 
The B-1 bomber is located in two different, um, two different Air Force bases in the United States. One of them is in Abilene, Texas. I used to live in Abilene, Texas. The B-1 bomber is a wild, incredible, and beautiful bomber. It has stealth capabilities. That means the B-1 bomber can sneak up on you and you don't see it on your radar. Think about that with how you use your words. The, the B-1 bomber carries 24 nuclear bombs and it can fly 4,600 miles without refueling. Several personnel arm the B-1 bombers. And it is kind of a sobering thought when you're in Abilene, Texas, to know that these B-1 bombers are flying with loaded nuclear bombs on them. Well, these uh, personnel that armed the B-1 bomber, there is about 11 or 12 personnel. I can't remember exactly how many are involved, but each one of them knows their step, but not the other step. It's one of the fail-safes of arming a nuclear weapon. Training's one thing, but eventually in the training, you're a part of a team that actually arms these nuclear weapons. I used to ride mountain bikes with an Air Force soldier who described what it was like to be that last guy that actually armed that nuke, all 24 of them. He said, the first time you do it, you lay awake all night thinking about what you just did, the potential for damage. Christian, watch your words. In Galatians chapter 5, Paul writes this starting in verse 13. Christian, you were chosen to be free. Be careful that you do not please your old selves by sinning because you are free. Live this free life by loving and helping others. You obey the whole law when you do this one thing. Love your neighbor as, your, as you love yourself. But if you hurt and make it hard for each other, watch out or you may be destroyed by each other. I say this to you, let the Holy Spirit lead you in each step. Then you will not please your sinful old selves. Think about the power pack description there. Now remember, the Holy Spirit, once you claim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit gives you gifts, the gifts of creative power with your words. You can create and move and transform others in this world with your words. The power of God is in you. He gives authority to your words. You're going to find yourself in an unusual situation where there's just chaos and suddenly everybody turns to you and your words have unusual authority. But you have one mission with your words. Your one mission is to make Jesus beautiful, to make Jesus attractive. That's your mission. Not to make you famous. Not your comfort is not your mission. Your mission is about Jesus. You've, you've laid aside the lordship of self for the lordship of Christ, right? And so Paul says, watch yourselves because you're free in the Holy Spirit, but spend your freedom on the greater cause of Christ, not the lesser cause on what you desire or what will make life easier in this world. Later in this passage, Paul lists the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control for you see christians our words translate god to the world our language is the vocabulary of faith it's how faith is explained people watch us we have an unusual distinctive responsibility a challenge it could be a burden or it could be a beautiful thing People are watching our words so they can understand who God is. Our words make it easier or harder for people to see, believe in, and find Jesus. So Thanksgiving was a couple of days ago. 
Some of you might have had Zoom calls with family on the other side of the country or city. Uh, it was a frustrating time. It was kind of hard to get to the grocery store and get stuff. There was a lot of, there, there could have been a lot of circumstances that might have made you share a harsh word with someone. Can you remember the last person you shared a harsh word towards? Some of us, um, some of us are blessed to have pressed past the harsh words, and we use Thanksgiving as an unusual opportunity for blessing, uh, where we would share with others, maybe in Zoom or in person, hey, you know what, I want to tell you I want to tell you exactly why I appreciate you. Let me tell you why I'm thankful for you. Can, can you remember the last person you went out of your way to share the word of blessing towards? I've been, um, I've been really thinking about and trying to practice a communication tool that business coach and author Vanessa Van Edwards uh, teaches. It's called priming. And it's a real simple step just in your emails. You've got, a, you've got a meeting coming up. More likely it's going to be a Zoom meeting. And so uh, Edwards suggests that you prime the email. And so you say in your email, instead of our meeting's Tuesday at 3, you say, I'm really looking forward to our meeting Tuesday at 3. It's going to be a great meeting. It's called priming. In other words, you insert a positive phrase or words that has an emotional impact towards um, that meeting or that engagement. I know we're going to have coffee this week. I'm, I just want you to know I'm really looking forward to spending time with you. And uh, Dr. Edwards goes on to explain how priming dramatically influences our engagement with other people. What if we did that as Christians? What if we primed every conversation? What if we primed every engagement this week with those words of blessing? Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount is more than just the introduction to the book of Matthew. Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is reframing all of faith He's saying, I want, you to, I want you to know what you need to expect. You're, you're, going to be, you're going to be representing the kingdom. We're going to flesh this thing out for everybody else in the world. They're going to be able to see what does it mean to know God, to believe that forever is real. We're going to show everybody what this means in you. And in this new reality, your words are more important than you can possibly imagine. In this new faith reality, your words, listen to me, your words are designed to leave people better than you found them. I, I would call this the least, the least of the kingdom challenges. Can you at least use your words, the words that God gives you creation power like Genesis 1, that, that's just the least. We're not asking you to start a church, move to India, sell your house and feed the poor. All we're asking is, could you just at least use your words to leave people better than how you found them? On Facebook, in the grocery store, phone calls and Zoom Christian, will you commit to this? Will you commit to this this week? Watch your words, Christian. When we think about the Sermon on the Mount, how we use our words is this incredible opportunity during this pandemic. The pandemic is not holding us back from the gospel. The pandemic is not hindering us in any way, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you see, Christian, you've been given supernatural gift of word power. You've been given authority so that your words have authority more than any other human being on the planet Earth. 
your words. Your words make Jesus famous. That's your one mission.